Hi, this is Tim with After Later Audio, and today we're going to be talking about the Peaks module, all its different variations that we have here at After Later, and then we're also going to talk about the Dead Man's Catch firmware, um, and then in future videos we are going to go into more depth on the Dead Man's Catch firmware, because what that is, is uh, it's an alternate firmware that basically just really expands the functionality of the Peaks module. Um, but before we get into any of that, let's just talk about what Peaks is generally. Peaks is a now discontinued module from Mutable Instruments. It's a bit of a Swiss army knife in that it has an envelope mode, an LFO mode, a tap LFO mode, and a drum mode. And then you can go into split mode, which we'll talk about in a moment, or expert. Um, so at face value, pretty simple looking, but with just a few button combinations that are very easy to remember, this thing can be extremely useful. And like I said, once that Dead Man's Catch firmware is uploaded, um, then it, it just becomes even more uh, expansive, really. Um, but let's talk about these envelopes really quick. So in basic envelope mode, you get uh, two identical envelopes um, that are individually triggerable. Um, and there's a button for triggering these, which is pretty pretty fun and extra fun in the drum mode, as we'll see momentarily. Um, but you can also trigger them. So as you can see, identical. So what these controls are in the standard envelope mode is A, D, S, R, attack, decay, sustain, release. Now let's actually just trigger them with different triggers. So now you can see they're the same envelope, but they're just being triggered at different times. If we go into split mode, now we have split the one and two controls and the three and four controls. So one and two control envelopes, envelope one's attack and decay. And then three and four control envelope two's attack and decay. So now we have two completely separate envelopes that can be individually triggered, but we only have attack and decay control over them. If we do a long press of the split button, now we're in what's called expert mode. Notice it's blinking twice there. If I push it one more time, it'll blink once. So when it's blinking just that one time, now we have A, D, S, and R for envelope one, do another pre press, and now we have ADSR for two. So now that's why it's called expert modes. So with a little bit of diving, that's not really that technical. Uh, you can get way more control over the envelopes. Okay, really quickly, let's go over the LFO function of peaks. Um, so there's actually variable waveforms, which is really fun. Um, so you got your standard frequency control. Um, your trigger are just going to reset the cycle. So the frequency control will be the speed of the LFO and the trig just re-triggers the cycle. So it's not really clocking it. Um, but we'll get to that in a moment. Here we have um, knob two, as we saw just a second ago, controls the waveform. So all the way left, we have a sine wave. We can get up into a triangle. And then a square, and then a uh, triangle with stepped voltage, which is pretty fun. And then this one is a uh, a clocked noise source. Um, so what's really fun about this is the knob knob three has a different um, effect depending on the wave shape. So when you're in sine mode, um, knob three will do some wave folding, which is pretty nice. Um, when you're in triangle mode, you can do some ramps, reverse ramps, uh, square, controls the duty cycle so you can get down to like trigger, trigger lengths here you can see, and then you can get to like really long kind of like gate lengths. Um, then in the stepped triangle, um, this controls the amount of steps. So all the way to the right, you're adding steps, and then you go to the left, you start subtracting steps, and then you can eventually end up in square, because um, it's just one step. So that's fun. And then um, here is, it's actually more visible when you turn it up, because it is clocked noise. Here the um, 
this controls the uh, interpolation. So you can get like nice smooth uh, random noise stuff or you can get a nice stepped noise source. And then knob 4 controls the same thing um, for each waveform. It is uh, it's the phase, the initial phase control. So the trigger resets the LFO to the phase set by the initial phase control. Um, cool. So that's just like the standard mode. Um, when you go into split mode, obviously the controls change. So let's go to split. Um, channel one becomes frequency, and then channel uh, two becomes waveform, and then that's just the same. For each one so that's the split mode and then as you could imagine when you go into expert mode it's the same as the twin mode where one blink will control the frequency waveform wave shape variation and initial phase of output one and then another short press for a double blink now you've got the same thing for output two so now we're in the tap lfo mode and it's very similar to the standard lfo mode except for um channel one controls the amplitude of the waveform and then um, two controls the waveform uh, shape uh, three wave uh, waveform variation and then uh, four is initial phase the main difference here is you can tap in the speeds of your LFO get wildly different speeds um, and of course you can set it external triggers to clock the LFO and you may be thinking well can't you do that with in standard LFO mode the difference here is this is actually setting the time of the frequency of the wave with the trigger um, in the standard LFO mode the trigger is just restarting the cycle of the LFO and parameter one is what's controlling the frequency. So that's the difference between the main difference between the tap and the standard LFO mode. Okay, on to the drum mode. Um, it's an 808 style kick and snare generator. Um, and uh, yeah, you can get some really, really fun results out of it. Also, very fun to play with the trigger buttons. So it's obviously the most fun to uh, send it a beat uh, sequence. Um, so here are our controls. In twin and expert mode, we have uh, the frequency. And then we have uh, the frequency modulation or the tone control. Um, attack or no noisiness. And then uh, decay. So obviously in, um, in split mode, you have these four uh, parameters that I just talked about, but you have them individually over the bass and the snare drum. Um, and then in split mode, you have um, bass drum, attack, and decay. Um, and then snare drum, tone, and noisiness. Okay, now that we have a general understanding of what Peaks is, let's talk about all the different variations we have here at After Later Audio. Let's start with the PKs. Um, so here's our 3U version of the PK, 4HP. You got your buttons here at the bottom. Same exact inputs, outputs, and controls as the regular Peaks, just much smaller. And then the same thing up here with the PK uh, 1U version. It's just a 1U version of it. Um, Here's where it gets really exciting to me and um, where I think it just gets much more useful and fun as a module um, is with the Baker and the Rainier. So let's start with the Baker here. Um, the 8HP, you got your buttons here, you can see. Um, the difference here is now you have attenuverters for CV control over the four parameters. And then Rainier takes that additional functionality of attenuverters on the uh, CV input controls for all these parameters. It takes that even further by adding attenuverters for the output. So I think that is, uh, that's my favorite version here. Um, so you can get in your LFO mode, get an LFO going. 
and you can control basically your amplitude and get it down into negative. So yeah, that's, that's the basic differences here with all these different variations. Okay, the final thing that I want to just briefly go over here in this video is the Dead Man's Catch alternate firmware, which does come installed on all of our Peaks variations. With a long press of this button, we have now entered alternate envelope mode. You can tell because the envelope LED is illuminated and then we have a blinking LED below it. And the blinking light lets you know what type of um, alternate envelope you're in. For. So for example, right here, we have a double attack envelope, and then we go to a repeating attack envelope, and then a looping envelope, and then a randomized AD envelope. And then finally, my favorite of the alternate envelopes is the bouncing ball. Um, and then another long press brings us into alternate LFO, so we can go through all of our different LFO modes. I'll put them up on the screen here. Um, alternate tap mode and alternate drum mode. So yeah, that's that's basically uh, the rundown on the peaks and all the different variations that we have here. Stay tuned for a future video uh, where I'm going to do a deep dive into the Dead Man's Catch alternate firmware. Um, if you have any questions about this, please visit afterlateraudio.com. Um, thank you for watching.